Adam, we do want to talk about Jordan Love. Are you hearing anything different from his camp or anywhere else about the timeline for when he might return? You know, it, it'll be interesting today to see how they treat it, right? Like, I'm going to guess that they list him as limited in practice. That's going to be my early guess, okay? And my guess is he'll be limited this week. They'll list him as questionable, and he won't play. Now, again, the week hasn't happened, so maybe he's feeling much better, and maybe they feel like they're comfortable trotting him out there. Uh, I, I, I think in the end, I think, as I've been told all along, and again, he could have had dramatic healing over the weekend. I don't know that. He could be feeling a lot better this week. I don't know that. Initially, I was told from the jump, three to four weeks. I was told initially that the games that were most likely for him to come back were either the Vikings in week four or the Rams in week five. So again, I continue to believe that that will be the case until it's not, until it's not. And that's what we'll be tracking. But I think that they'll keep it alive this week. I think they'll foster some hope he could go and my guess and i want to be very clear my guess is that he won't play on sunday and that he'll be back either the following week or the week after adam how much do agents influence their clients when it comes to play or not to play yeah i i i don't i don't think as much as you think i think they have a voice and i think that they weigh in but ultimately players play again here's what i would do i would say to you chewy you played a long time. Did your agents have a voice and advise you on certain times in your career when to play or when not to play? Never. Let me ask you that. Never. Never. If I wasn't, if I wasn't in a contract year, Adam, and I was under a three-year de- deal I, during the season in a non-contract year, maybe talk to my agent once a year. Yep. Not very much. Okay. But 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 I think everybody's different, right? Sure. And it depends on your contractual situation, your injury history, the kind of guy you are or not. So I, I think it's always different. Um, that's great that you weren't that way. And and I don't think Jordan Love's agent is getting on the phone with him and saying, don't play this week. And I think, obviously, the decision belongs to Jordan Love and the Packers medical staff. Um, do I think at some point in time that Jordan Love will speak to his agent? Probably. Do I think the agent will say, be smart and careful? Yes. Do I think Jordan Love's going to do what he wants? Absolutely. Well, let's transition right to this. What's going to happen with Tua? Well, in that case, the agent is one of many voices. One of many voices. You know, I was with Teddy Bruschi over the weekend, and, and I said this to uh, a couple of our people, and I really believe this to be true. Teddy is such a great guy, so unique, so thoughtful. And when he was talking about Tua over the weekend and the angles at which he was viewing that situation, he was talking about the fact that how he had a stroke and there are all these people telling him what to do and his wife was saying, you're not playing anymore. And his brother saying, Teddy, you're a football player. This is what you've always done. you got to get back out there. And there were medical people saying one thing and family members saying another and doctors, as he pointed out on the show, said, you know, doctors, he said, with doctors, you operate in the gray. There's no black and white ever. They don't ever say, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. you need to retire or you need to keep playing. It's safe. They say, here's the deal. You know, you've got this steel box in your heart and, it, you know, you can continue on, but you have to be careful. And if uh, there's a hit the right way, it could be catastrophic, but the chances and, and ultimately the decision belongs to you. Like you think about anybody's experience with a doctor. It's always, it, it's never, it never seems black or white. There's always more information. It's never clear. Teddy was going on and on about this. And it made me realize that Teddy has become our show's version of Tom Jackson, who was incredible on air, incredible off the air. They mm-hmm. played the same position. Um, and I think that's kind of the role that Teddy has evolved into. And I, I don't recall Teddy saying to me, and I knew Teddy's agent at the time, guy by the name of Brad Blank. I, oh, I don't think Brad. Teddy's yep. yeah, uh, yeah, Boston guy, yeah, right? Sure, yeah. I don't think I don't think that uh Brad weighed in. I don't think to his guy, you know, will will demand or order one thing or another. He may say, Hey Tua, I feel this way or I feel that way. But there are voices that are more meaningful and matter more. Doctors, wife, parents, and, and they will have their own opinions that Tua will factor in. Now, again, going into these meetings with neurologists prior to him 
being placed on the injured reserve list, sidelining him for a minimum of four games. My belief, my strong belief is he plans, he wants to keep playing. That's what he's wanted to do. Now, whether he actually does that, we'll see. He's got time to sift through this, have conversations with all these people to figure out what's best for him. But yes, he absolutely, in my mind, uh, would like to keep playing and we'll see how they handle the situation. How much of a say does the team actually have in that, Adam? And this is one of those weird, nebulous areas. It is not like breaking your throwing hand or something like that, where you can say, you cannot do the job, therefore we can step in and say, we need to go in a different direction. The concussion thing is a little tougher to nail down. Can the team say, and again, I know they did because they put him on IR yesterday, but long term, I'm talking about, can they say, unfortunately, we no longer believe you can do the job that we have hired you to do. Is there anything in there where the team has some sort of recourse? Well, look, um, I, I think it's distasteful to talk about it immediately. I think now now that he's on IR, now that he's visited with neurologists, now that a little time has gone by, I, I, I think that you can bring it back to money, okay? And um, there's a lot of money involved in this particular case. If doctors say to Tua, we can't clear you, and he decides to retire, he collects all his money. If doctors say you're cleared to play, you're okay to go out there, and he decides to retire, he forfeits his money, right? So Mm -hmm. there are, are, and, and we're not talking about, you know, an insignificant amount of money. The remaining balance is something like $126 million. So, uh, let's obviously be aware that in some small way that I would think that that has to be factored in. Ultimately, his health is by far going away the most important thing. But money usually is a part of people's decisions in life, right? Yeah. So um, I think the team um, will follow the line rightfully that we want you to do what you believe is best for you. And we're here to support you in whatever way we can, whatever that is. And, and let's see what he decides. Adam, give me a couple of your biggest surprises, two and O or O and two in the league so far. Well, I, I, I think we just look at all the two and O's and O and twos. And I think that <laughs> those are the ones that, I'm just looking at right now, right? The Ravens, 0-2. The Bengals, 0-2. The Vikings, 2-0. The Saints, 2-0. The Rams, 0-2. The the Buccaneers, 2-0. The Steelers, 2-0. The Chargers, 2-0. The Texans, 2-0. We'd expect the Jaguars, 0-2. The Colts, 0-2. Titans, 0-2. Panthers, 0-2. We'd expect that. So, you know, some teams in there. The Saints... That's the, that's the big one, Adam. I, I just I can't believe in the way they won and the way they pounded yeah. Dallas. Are they for real? Well, here here is here is what's going on there in my mind. They made a move this offseason that when they did it, I knew that they would be better. They hired Clint Kubiak, another disciple of the Shanahan tree, just like Matt LaFleur, just like Sean McVay, just like Kyle Shanahan. Clint Kubiak, who... I remember as a little boy at Broncos training camp, his father, Gary, was the offensive mm-hmm. coordinator. Broncos for the very first NFL team that I ever covered. Gary was uh, such a pro, went on to become the head coach of the Houston Texans. Clint was his son. He went on to coach in San Francisco under Kyle, and they hired him. And I thought to myself, okay, that's going to be a great hire. And already, they, they, they've been incredible early on. Like, you look at that offense – and what they've done, and it's incredible. Through two games, they have totaled 91 points compared to the 36 that they scored all last season. They are the only team since the 1970 merger other than the 2009 Saints team that won a Super Bowl to score at least 90-plus points in their first two games of the season. That Saints team back in 2009 scored 93. This one's 91. And, you know, he's turned Derek Carr into an early season MVP for whatever that's worth. So, um, Clint Kubiak's going to get a lot of credit, just like Bobby Slowick 
last year, another former 49ers assistant, another Shanahan tree disciple, went on to become the Texans offensive coordinator. And what did the Texans offense do last year? And I know they had C.J. Stroud, but I believe Bob Lee Slowick was instrumental in all of that as well. Last thing for you, Adam, is there any market for, um, I almost said Kyler Murray. Good grief, Jen. <laughs> Bryce Young. Um, Bryce Young, thank you, obviously. Um, that situation is he's just got benched, and you're going to see Andy Dalton out there. Is there any market for him? You know, some of these teams that might be looking for a quarterback, could you see him being traded? He's a depressed asset right now, but is there is there any talk of that around the league? Yeah, I, I think that there will be interest from teams, but I don't believe that Carolina is going to be interested in trading him right now. Like, again, you're going to trade him for draft picks, right? A draft pick or draft picks. and. The truth of the matter is that pick or picks will be for the 25 draft. So you can trade Bryce Young after the season and get the same draft pick haul and have him be there in the event that they need to turn to him again, in the event that somehow he shows signs of a turnaround, which nobody expects. I don't think that's practically realistic. I agree, but you never know. Um, and they can get those picks later on. Now, if some team is desperate enough and feels like Bryce Young, who's been awful the first two games and the first 18 games of his career, is is an answer and they're willing to overpay. Do I think Carolina would be interested? Sure, absolutely. Do I think there's going to be a team that overpays in season? No, which means that I think Carolina winds up holding on to him. And I think we revisit that very scenario after the season. And ultimately, I think he does get traded, but just not in season. All right, Adam, good stuff from you this morning. We appreciate you and we will talk to you again very soon. Oh, Chewy, let, let me say this. If, if you do get detained in Turkey, I, I really enjoyed our time together. I uh, enjoyed working with you and getting to know you. It's been a great pleasure and honor of mine. And, um, you know, if, uh, if, you know if, if, if it doesn't work out there and you don't make it back, you know, you're detained there, our thoughts are with you. I just want you to know that. Okay? Adam, Adam, I will haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> I will haunt you the rest of your life. <laughs> the list of people that you will haunt. He's number one. Yeah, I was going to say, it's getting longer. Here's the thing, Jen. I'm just telling you right now. Chewie's getting on that plane. He's going to be thinking of me over the weekend. Oh, of course I am. <laughs> All right, Keith Urban. That's right. Have a good one, Adam. We'll talk to you again soon. Take travels, Chewie. Thank you. That's your favorite song, Chew. That one where he says, take your cat and leave yes, my sweater. You'll yes. think of me. I know you love that one.